I would like to invite Mr. Narayan Murthy to deliver a special address on his thoughts on why India needs fundamental science and research. Mr. Murthy. The objectives of a university are twofold. First is guiding students to reach the frontiers of knowledge in any branch of science, engineering, medicine, law, humanities, social sciences and arts through teaching and practice. Some of these successful students will go to the real world and apply the knowledge acquired in their education at the university to make life better for the society. Some will take the second path, which is to focus on what the Germans call Weisenschaft, or pure learning, that is knowledge for its own sake. Some of you will wonder why anybody should bother about knowledge for knowledge's sake. Why should we worry about this esoteric field in a poor country like India? Let me answer this question. Science is about unraveling the secrets of nature and understanding reality. For example, physics answers questions like why the sky is blue, why an apple falls, why the earth rotates around the sun, why a rocket roars into space, why heat goes only from a hot body to a cold body and not vice versa, why sound becomes less intense as the car moves away from us, and why we see a rainbow. Engineering, on the other hand, is about using the power of science to remove constraints of nature and make life more comfortable for human beings. Let me remind you the words of Edward Teller that the science of today is the technology of tomorrow. For those of you who are somewhat skeptical about the usefulness of fundamental research, let me give you some examples of how they can be very useful. Quantum theory, invented by Max Planck, Albert Einstein, Niels Bohr, Max Born, Paul Dirac, Vernon Heisenberg, Wolfgang Pauli, Erwin Schrodinger, John Bell, John Clauser, and Richard Feynman, is what has made transistors, lasers, nuclear energy, quantum computing, and DVDs possible today. A recent example of superb engineering based on fundamental research in quantum theory is Google's quantum chip, Sycamore. Sycamore with 53 QU bits solved a computing problem in 200 seconds, just almost three minutes, that was estimated to take Summit, a supercomputer at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, 10,000 years. With quantum bits in the future, we are likely to have hacker-free quantum internet, hurrah for quantum theory. The theory of relativity, enunciated and improved by Albert Einstein in 1905 and 1915, is what makes today's global positioning systems accurate. Without this celebrated theory, our GPSs would be off by seven miles. There would be no nuclear energy and no PET scanners that use Einstein's famous equation equal to mc squared for their working. Without the theoretical work of Kurt Gödel, Alonzo Church, Alan Turing, and John von Neumann, we would not have had computers that are so ubiquitous and so critical to our existence today. Even emphasis would not exist without that work. Without the celebrated fundamental research of James Maxwell and Claude Shannon, our world would be a dark and disconnected place. For those of you interested more in reading about how fundamental research could be useful, I would suggest you read the book, The Usefulness of Useless Knowledge by Robert Flexner, the founder of the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton, with a companion essay by my friend Robert Digraph, the current director of that institute. 
This book is about the power of fundamental research in making life better for humanity. Therefore, we have to overcome our skepticism about the so-called useless knowledge and start helping our youngsters pursue fundamental research enthusiastically. It is perhaps appropriate that we follow the British chemist and Nobel laureate George Porter, who calls such research not yet applied research. We want our youngsters to understand that these most famous scientific theories were enunciated when these extraordinary scientists tried to understand the fundamental nature of reality. Why is it important for our youngsters to pursue fundamental research? Just look around this hall and you get the answer. The electric bulb, fan, air conditioner, projector, microphone, and laptop, they all came from fundamental research and were all invented outside India. I watched TV in my hotel room in Delhi. I took a flight to come from Delhi to Bangalore, called my secretary on my mobile phone, came in a car from my home to this event, and I listened to FM in the car. Every one of these came from fundamental research in science and its applications by en engineers. Our youth deserve to invent some important stuff, valuable to India and the world, so that they are recognized and respected. Else, what is our contribution to this world as a nation of 1.25 billion people? Look at our own history of advances in science and mathematics. There were many Indian scientists and mathematicians who did earth-shaking work during the golden period of science and mathematics in India from 180 to 1480. The scientists and mathematicians of the golden era of Indian science and mathematics were some of the deepest and most virginal thinkers of the world of that period. Arya Bhatta, who lived from 476 AD to 550 AD, produced Arya Bhatia, his most influential work of that time, and introduced ideas on, plan on planetary motion, quadratic, simultaneous, and indeterminate equations, areas of triangles, shape of the earth, and cause of day and night. Brahmagupta, who lived from 598 AD to 665 AD, enunciated the rules to compute with zero, to compute squares and cubes of integers, and rules for dealing with fractions, which were revolutionary ideas at that time. Bhaskara Charya of Bijapur, who lived from 1114 AD to 1185 AD, whose work in calculus predates those of Newton and Leibniz is another illustrious role model for our children. Madhava from Kerala, who lived from 1340 AD to 1425 AD, demonstrated the power of his virginal thinking in using infinite series for approximate computation of some trigonometric functions. The conclusion, my young friends, is that our youth is capable of original thinking if we create an environment that encourages such adventures of mind. There are even more important reasons why our youngsters have to be encouraged and equipped to become contributors to solving huge problems that confront us every day. India probably has more problems facing its citizens than any other country in the world. Our huge population is a big bottleneck for providing our children with basic education, healthcare, nutrition, and shelter. What is the solution? I believe that we can find appropriate solutions to our problems if we educate our youth to think independently to use research and its applications to find scientific and technological solutions to our problems. That requires our country to provide full freedom of inquiry and imagination to our youngsters that enter the portals of our higher educational and research institutions. These youngsters come in as intelligent, curious, enthusiastic, and energetic young men and young women and they have to be nurtured 
to live as confident, knowledgeable, daring, open-minded, and independent thinkers that will go after solutions to the problems of our country. Can our youngsters find a vaccine to chikungunya or dengue? Can they find an inexpensive solution to desalination of seawater? Can they improve the productivity of farmers by a factor of five or 10? Can they find an inexpensive solution for purification of our polluted air? Can they devise non-invasive tests for blood sugar measurement and for detecting certain kinds of cancers that require biopsy? Can they predict a drought or a flood a few months in advance to help our farmers? Can they find an inexpensive but strong concrete that will help us build roads that withstand wear and tear for 100 years? I have just mentioned a few of the plethora of problems that we face. If our youngsters can find solutions to these problems, then they would bring back pride to our people, to our country, and to our future generations, like the scientists, mathematicians, surgeons, and physicians of the golden period of Indian science date between 180 and 1480. Can we hope that an Indian youngster educated and working in an Indian scientific research institution will make a mind-boggling discovery like the quantum theorists who enunciated that the very act of observing a system will influence what is being observed and that the inherent nature of reality is fuzzy. Will one of our youngsters contribute to science like a little known Irish theorist like John Bell and a graduate student like John Clauser whose design of an experiment proved that Niels Bohr and the mathematics of quantum mechanics were right and that Albert Einstein was wrong. Can we produce right here in India scientists like C. V. Raman, Ashok Sen, and Satyendranath Bose? Can our youngsters educate it entirely in India and doing research in India emulate Chandrasekhar, Hargovind Kurana, Venki Ramakrishnan, Amartya Sen, Abhijit Banerjee, Akshay Venkatesh, and Manjul Bhargav? What kind of research should our youngsters do? I want it to be an expression of an age as well as an influence operating upon both present and future, as Robert Flexner once said. I want India to be a place where discovery and invention happen every month. Thank you very much.